Josh Taylor and Tiafimo Lopez going at it at the theater at Madison Square. And uh, listen, this fight is all set up too to be controversial. These guys are very close in um, skill level. It's going to be a high, high caliber boxing event. I would imagine both guys are incredibly good. Um, I'm really looking forward to this. What do you think here? And I'll get, I'll pull the lines up. I want to get your initial thoughts and then we'll talk about who you like in the fight. It's an intriguing fight. It really is for a lot of reasons. Um, both, you probably not the reasons you would expect me to say. Both have taken steps back. Uh, there's no doubt about it. They've both taken steps backwards lately. And both probably deserve to lose their last fights. How often have we seen that? Yep, where you're going point. into a big fight where both fighters probably lost their last fights, but they got the house treatment. You know, they got the preferential treatment that we talk about. Taylor probably deserved to lose against Catterall and Teofimo versus Martin. They were, they were both dropped in these fights where they were prohibitive favorites, but Taylor was actually hurt much worse. Um, lately, they both in, these, in those fights, they just walked in. No setups, no disguising, you know, what their intentions were. No boxing IQ. Just coming in, Ken, throwing and getting caught coming in. Not what we came to expect of them or we thought we expected of them, of being a higher quality level athlete, performer, fighter than just guys coming in, being game and chucking punches. Tiafino kept getting caught with a southpaw right hook of Martin on his way in. By the way, Taylor is also a southpaw that he'll be fighting. And he'll probably catch him coming in. Taylor will also have that right hook ready to catch Tiafino coming in, just like Martin caught him. If Tiafino just looks to come in cold with no feint or proper jab or science. Teofimo was reaching in a lot in his last fight. Taylor, hey, the criticisms, I'm spreading it out because it's constructive criticism, it's fair, it's right, it's honest. Uh, Taylor was also just walking in, getting nailed with straight left hands from the southpaw Catterall um, too. Of course, Teofimo's not a southpaw, so perhaps that's going to save a Taylor it's going to favor Taylor that he's not fighting a southpaw. Uh, Taylor, the way this fight breaks down for me, Taylor has long arms. He should look to control the outside and force or try to get Teofimo to reach in um, to, get, to get him where he can catch him with some counters uh, as he comes forward. Uh, I think Taylor sometimes looks for his left uppercut maybe a little too much. I don't know, but for me, he better be he be he better be looking for some of the other punches too. Uh, that I think he could just catch Tiafimo coming in, like I said, force him on the outside, force him to make mistakes, force him to reach a little bit like he did in his last fight, and if he does that, I think Taylor will be serving himself right. He get a chance to maybe catch him again the way Martin caught him. Teofimo should use feints before coming in. In other words, knock on the front door a little bit before you just come in. Come in the side door. Keep tail off balance so he can't time him coming in. Teofimo, he has to fight a controlled and disciplined fight using a snappy jab um, to set up combinations and not just looking for one big punch. He needs to fight a complete fight as he did and never did again uh, with that level, but as he did, Ken, with Lomachenko. And we thought that we were watching the coming of maybe a great fighter when we saw that. And then it never quite materialized to that next point. Um, he took a step back. but uh, And then he lost, of course, right away to Cambosis. But, uh, and a lot of turmoil in his life. I get it. But still, that doesn't matter. You get in the ring... You got to perform. Nobody cares about that other stuff. That that's the that's the bottom line. Uh, but he if he if it's still in him, 
He needs to fight a complete fight, disciplined fight, like he did with Lomachenko. But when I was when I was going over this in my mind, I thought to myself that Lomachenko fight seems like a hundred years ago, doesn't it, Ken? Oh yeah. It, it really. It, 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 so if both or either one of them fight in a sloppy, reckless style, you know. Just you know, just moving in, looking for big shots, like I've been describing in the last couple of fights. Someone's going to get hurt, or they both might get hurt. But I don't think they will. I really believe that they respect each other's abilities in this fight, and they're going to fight a much tighter, much more button-up fight. I think this is a fight that is really going to come down to who has the better trainer. I don't, I don't talk about this too often, but the trainer is so important, I think, in the preparation. Coming off what they're coming off, what I just described, both of them. So I think it's really going to be very, very much a matter of their trainers where it's going to influence them in preparation for this specific fight. They both seem to be struggling outside of the ring with like just craziness and Lopez with the crazy comments. Let me ask you this. Which one of those fighters, let's say the right, the fight is razor thin, or like could go either way. Who do you think the judges, who do you think the promotion wants to win this fight? Has top rank had enough of Teofimo's crap? You know, he's fought on, uh, who do you fight for? DeZone or Trilla? He's had fights away from the promoter, so that's not going to go over well. Josh Taylor's had his issues outside of the ring. Who do you think the promotion wants to see win this fight? That's a good question, Ken. And I bet your fans probably want to hear me answer it, but that's a good question. I'm glad you brought it up. If I had to guess, it's a guess, but it's a calculated guess from knowing the business, as long as they have secure contracts with them both, that I don't know what their situation is. But let's say they do. I don't know. But if they do running for a little while, I would say they would want Taylor. That's and what I was going to say too. I'm, I'm I'll with tell you. you why. Maybe they're fed up a little bit with the father, with Teofimo and all that 100%. stuff. hundred you know, percent. The, That's, the, yep. the great takeover. And his loyalty or lack of loyalty that he already yep. showed. Um and quite frankly, they came out with this name to take over, and they didn't exactly take over, and they hurt themselves in the public, uh, you know, in the public. Court of form, public opinion. The, yeah, yeah, they did, and they're not thought of the way they were coming off that Teofimo fight, and he's not that big takeover off star the Loma they thought fight. he was going to be. You mean yeah, off he, the Loma off fight? Off the Loma. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm sorry. Thank you. He, he's not that big star that they thought he was going to be. You know, so. I think that they probably, everything is business, like the Hyman Roth and the Godfather. Michael, it's not personal, it's business. Everything's business. I think that business, they'll look at it from everything I just said and one other thing. They'll say, you know what? Across the pond, we can make more money That's right. than we can with Taylor. He's got a better reputation you know, over there. He, he has still be undefeated. Teofimo already has one loss um, where... If we build his fights over there, we can make more money with him over across the pond than we can here in the United States with a diminished Teofimo, the way they look at it. And so that's a good question. And that, that, that would be the way I think, knowing them, knowing the business, knowing what obviously, uh, you know, what influences their thinking. I would say they probably think that way. I believe that, as you said, they both had their internal problems in those mental areas recently. I believe that Lopez has more athletic ability. I just said that Taylor was better technically. I believe that Lopez has more athletic ability, but his behavior and technique has been so erratic, lately at least, that it has to be considered in the appraisal of this fight. Uh I initially wanted to pick Taylor, uh, 
Before you get into the pick, do you know what the line is on this fight? This is for the guys at my bookie. Go to mybookie.ag. Use the promo code Atlas for a fifty percent credit on your first deposit. You deposit two thousand, they'll give you another thousand. You'll have three thousand to play with. Um, please gamble responsibly. Go to Athletic, uh, not Athletic Greens. Go to the Athletic Greens as well. But go to mybookie.ag and use the promo code Atlas. Do you know what the line is, Teddy, on this fight? I believe that I do. I believe that Taylor's uh, uh, not a huge favorite, less than two to one, but he's a he's a favorite. He's a yeah. maybe you got to lay one seventy. I don't know somewhere in that neighborhood. close. Yeah, minus one eighty five on Taylor, uh, plus one thirty two on Lopez. That's from my bookie at mybookie.ag. Um, with that being said. What do you think? And I agree with you, by the way. I think that the promoters and I think all the parties involved would rather see Taylor win. I think people are getting sick and tired of the Tiafimo act. I think at the end of the day, as I said, whoever's in a better mental place, um, I I initially wanted to pick Taylor. Um, I did. For all the reasons I laid out, he's better technically. You know, he still hasn't learned how to lose. Um, and he's more buttoned up, as I said, you know, from from a from a standpoint of technique, and he's naturally the bigger guy, and he has the power, just like Tia Fimo, but he has the power to to be much, to do much more damage than Martin did. But after seeing Taylor so badly hurt by Catterall, and knowing that Lopez can be explosive. I said it before, I think he's athletically more gifted than Taylor. And knowing that he can be explosive at times, I'm probably going to go with Teofimo. Uh, and like I said, it's very interesting. And I'll put one caveat on that. And it's what you brought up, Ken. And I'm glad you brought it up. If it goes to the scorecards, unless Tia Fimo has dropped them 42 times, <laughs> if it goes... <laughs> I don't think any of that matters, Teddy. Honest to God, if a fight goes to a decision, the guy they want to win is getting that decision. <laughs> All right, 83 times. All right, 83 times. <laughs> so unless that happens, if it goes to the scorecards, if I was Tia Fimo, I'd be a little concerned. But having said that, um, I wouldn't bet with your money, Ken, <laughs> on this one. 